That right there is the sound you make when you pick up an RX 570 for 25 Aussie dollars, or in the US about 17 and a half USD, making this easily one of the best deals I've got in the history of the channel. Now I actually did get quite a few of these, as well as this one right beside it, the RX 470, which these were guaranteed working. So there was a catch to getting these nitros, or I think they're the poles or something like that, and that was that they were all untested and I didn't know if they worked, though they said they were working on the mining bench okay, and so if that was good enough for the mining bench, then they should be good enough for gaming after some tech, yes, loving. But I got right here the RX 470s. I got these for 60 Aussie dollars a pop. And it got me thinking, so that's about 42 USD as well. It got me thinking with this, right? We got the RX 470, we got the RX 570. So I got the two of these right together. But what if you're into flipping gaming PCs? And also, is it better, say for longevity purposes, to perhaps even load an RX 470 VBIOS onto an RX 570. And that's something I wanted to check because from the top of my memory, I believe that these uh, only lost about 10% performance to the RX 570s. But at the same time, the RX 570s ended up using about 40% more power than the RX 470s did. So that power efficiency is way in favor of the RX 470s. And of course, if you're putting together gaming PCs, that means less heat in the case, means you can get away with a more budget oriented power supply and not have to worry about potential problems in the future. Also on that note, these only need a six pin. These also only need a six pin, but even though they've got an eight pin, you can sort of get away with Polaris by just using a six pin. It was a weird sort of thing that I found out years ago and it's uh, sort of stuck with these RX 570s ever since. But with that aside, I'm gonna get both the V biases updated from the mining versions to the gaming versions. I'm gonna do a quick uh, check before I apply some new thermal paste to check out the temperatures of both these cards, give them some tech yes loving, and then recheck the temperatures as well as after that, loading up an RX 470 BIOS on this Sapphire RX 570. And then after that, checking the power consumption and the performance because these right here, the RX 570s and the RX 470s have a direct power meter where you can uh, measure how much power the actual card is using regardless of what else is on the system. So it's actually a handy feature of Polaris. With that aside, let's just get this show on the road. So both these cards have now had some tech, yes, loving applied to both. The RX 570, this one here took a lot longer than usual. Underneath the fans, there's sort of like some weird corrosion thing going on. I guess that just happens when they've been mined on a little bit too long. And I have seen this in the past with some other nitros that have come through here. So maybe it's just a unique thing to these cards, but I'm not too sure. It did take a long time to get off and uh, so I had to give that a lot of extra tech, yes, loving. And uh, now it's looking pretty good. Hopefully the temperatures, the before on this one was 66 degrees and the before on this one was 81 degrees. So we're gonna put both of these on the test bench now, see their after temperatures, and then also load up uh, an RX 470 BIOS on this to check out the performance differences. And we'll just test across three titles because they are pretty much the exact same cards, but one's got a refresh BIOS and of course, it's had time to mature a little bit more, so technically it should be a little bit better, but we'll find out how much better the RX 570 is right now. So the temperature differences between these two cards was pretty interesting. The Nitro only dropped down one degree, and then the RX 470, the reference model here, this dropped down six degrees. So this got a bigger difference than the 570. And the FPS was actually pretty negligible. I mean, in Tomb Raider, there was only a two FPS difference. And then in uh, Tom Clancy's The Division 2, a one FPS difference. And then in Far Cry New Dawn, we got a two FPS difference. But as we uh, looked at before with the power consumption, we had around 90 watts versus 120 watts. So it looks like the RX 470, for what it's worth, is doing a better job in terms of efficiency. But we're gonna try out one thing now, and that is to put an RX 470 BIOS on the RX 570 and see what we can come up with and see how it performs.
So now trying to flash an RX 470 BIOS onto an RX 570, I know it seems a little bit bizarre, made things even more bizarre when we successfully did flash the 470 Nitro BIOS onto the 570 Nitro, but then it was still coming up in Windows as an RX 570. And in fact, the power consumption was like six watts more than it originally was on the 570. So that, was, that just left me scratching my head. Maybe perhaps Sapphire were using a more leaky GPU die on the Nitro series, which then overclocks higher generally. But then for the RX 470 reference design, they're using essentially the models that don't leak as much, so they're more efficient up to a certain point, and they don't overclock as well. But this is where things get even more crazy because we ended up getting the original RX 470 V BIOS from this reference model, and it successfully flashed over to the 570 Nitro. And this is where things got really, really weird because it ended up showing up in Windows again as an RX 570, but the power consumption dropped down to around 85 watts. So we saw like a 35 watt drop in the power consumption. But this time around, the FPS was considerably lower than the 570 Nitro original V BIOS. In fact, we were a lot lower than the RX 470 as well. So when we pull up Tomb Raider, we had 51 average FPS, 30 low. And then pulling up Tom Clancy's The Division 2, we saw a big drop down to 51 average FPS. And then Far Cry New Dawn, that dropped down to 62 FPS. So very weird results to the point where I guess out of these three sort of BIOSes that I've used here today, the RX 470, this original one, does come out on top. So basically if you are into maybe flipping PCs or you wanna use your cards for a very long time, then essentially the less wattage that part uses, the longer it's going to last, all other things considered. Uh, so there's gonna be less heat dumped in the case, there's gonna be less heat um, being pushed out through all the components, etc. So, But another thing worth mentioning as well is that uh, trying to load up a custom BIOS now on AMD graphics cards like these, the Polaris cards, RX 470s and 570s, doesn't work anymore, at least from the top of my memory, because as soon as you mod that V BIOS, it then loses its signature and basically what you'll get is those error messages when you try to install the drivers or play games. So you have to use the official V BIOS, but within that V BIOS scope, you've only got a limited selection where you have to use, for instance, this BIOS on the RX 570 Nitro. And unfortunately, it just didn't really work out in this case where it was giving a lot lower performance for that lower wattage requirement. So basically to summarize today's video, when it comes to getting uh, GPUs with mining V BIOSes on them and you're going to reflash them, just stick to the original V BIOS. And if you're going to have to tune it, you might want to use maybe Wattman or MSI Afterburner with these cards and tinker around with a software mod because at least that way your games are going to work, things are going to work properly as opposed to loading up a different V BIOS, which in this case, this RX 470 was more efficient it wasn't when we loaded it up onto the Nitro. It just gave out a lot less performance than one would otherwise be used to. And obviously I don't wanna put that in a PC and then try and reflip that. It's just not good for the end user to be getting a lot lower performance. And also coming out of today's video, the RX 470 did perform very well, performed better in my opinion, especially in terms of efficiency than the RX 570. So that was awesome to see, but it does still leave the question open of, was perhaps the RX 470 a better bin in terms of the GPU die than the RX 570 was. Was maybe the RX 570 the worst of the worst when it came to binning Polaris cards? That I'm not sure of. If you guys out there know the answers, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and also let us know what you think of the RX 470 versus the 570. Which one would you pick over the other and why? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button and I will catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.